Amen. Chest too. <coughs> you know, actually, it was better than that. got to know that uh, and as a pastor knowing that that's taken care of that's valuable just knowing that that it's, it's not a performance it's about heart and that you know their their intent is to not just worship but to uh, help and bring us into worship and so we we celebrate them we appreciate them so much um man, boy we got we got a tough one today y'all ready and you know, you know the pastor's out of town when this comes up. And Travis is like, hey, hey, won't you do that while I'm gone? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to cover holiness. Well, I'm waiting to see who leaves. Holiness. Because that's a tough subject. As a matter of fact, it, uh, we don't like it. Most of us who were churched don't like it. So, uh, you got something I want to share with you first. Um, Country Church was having an annual revival meeting, and uh, the first night the preacher preached a message about repentance and the need to return to the Lord. After the altar call, a man came down the aisle saying, Fill me, Lord, fill me. The next night, the preacher challenged the congregation with a need to totally surrender their lives to Christ in complete obedience. Again, an altar call was extended. The same man jumped up and Ran down the aisle saying, Fill me, Lord, fill me. Third night. Preacher stands up. He warns his congregation of the evils of sin. Urges the congregation to live lives of holiness. Same man jumps up. Heads down the aisle saying, Fill me, Lord, fill me. His buddy sitting next to him stood up and said, Preacher, don't do it. He leaks. <laughs> I, I went looking. I went to the internet. Uh, the internet's uh, where we get. And I was gonna, I was gonna bring you some clips of the church lady. How many remember the church lady? That woman knew Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Oh, bless her heart. But, uh, but you know, I couldn't show it. I, I kept going. Oh, really? Oh, oh. I got all righteous and indignant. So, uh, we. Uh, we, we couldn't get the church lady, and so uh, what we've done is we've invited the next best thing, which would be the uh, church lady's little sister. And now it's time for church chat. Welcome to Church Chat. I'm the church lady. Today we're going to be talking about holiness. It says in Ezekiel, I will bring judgment unto my brother. I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstone, and burning sulfur upon him, and so I will show my holiness. Which brings us to our first guest. Everyone, the unholy trinity of a Jezebel. <laughs> Hello, Annie. Have a seat. Hi. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> Why don't we introduce ourselves? I'm Annie Nichols, and I'm a singer. Ah. <laughs> well, isn't that special? <laughs> well, let's have a seaters. Uh, I don't think I can set my dress. Honey. When the church lady says sit, you plant your little bottom on that velvet chair. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, let's start with, uh, do you wear this to church on Sundays? Yes. Well. Um, what's wrong with it? Well, I can see how you think it's not bad with our role models these days, you know, with that uh, Kim Kardashian and uh, Snooki from Jersey Horse. <laughs> I made a Satan 
twister. I meant Jersey Shores. <laughs> And look at you with your tattoos and piercings and your hair teased high to mock the heavens and a body squeezed into a dress just like a sausage in its casing. <laughs> you look like you can written all over, dear. Well, such lady, I know my fair share of sin. I mean, um... Well, aren't you extra special? <laughs> Do you consider yourself holy in this outfit? Yes. Hmm, I don't think so, dear. <laughs> so you're a musician. Do you sing at church? Yes. Who are some of your inspirational singers? I mean, I listen to like Beyonce and Jay-Z and... Do you listen to that crap music? <laughs> What's crap music? You know, that, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Anemone? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that crap music. Uh, Are you talking about Eminem? Eminem, yes, yes, yes. yes. You listen to that crap music, yes. Crap music. Crap music, it's unholy, dear, it's unholy. You know, he comes out with all those rap songs and stuff. Well, I wrote a rap song for Eminem. Cause I'm the church lady, yes I'm the church lady. All you other church ladies are just imitating. So won't the real church lady please stand up? Please stand up. Some clean cut artists like Justin Bieber. Oh. I mean, think of that face with that haircut and that million dollar smile. He affects me in a way I didn't think he could. Oh, that's all right, Bieber. Say my name. Say my name with your lovely angel's voice. <laughs> That voice that makes young girls tingle. And as well as some older ladies, you know. After, and I haven't, my tingle has been on a healthy sabbatical. <laughs> and now has returned with renewed vigor. Church lady, church lady, this is Jesus. Do not allow yourself to fall into the flesh. Use your holy power. Well, I'm tired of being holy, Jesus. I want me some of that beaver. <laughs> oh, my me. Yes, he is one of my finest creations. I'll be strong for you, Jesus. That's my girl. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Apparently, Bieber is unholier than I thought. <laughs> He's putting me through some trials and tribulations. <laughs> well, Annie, I think that we both learned that we're unholy today, so uh, I think we need an unsanctified dance. What do you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right, let's go. Hit it, Pearl! <laughs> this is Ben Church Jack with the Church Okay, y'all want to pray? Yeah. <laughs> For Beaver. For Beaver. <laughs> Somebody needs to warn that young man. <laughs> Holiness. You know, we, uh, we make it about everything in the world but what it is about. Uh, when I was growing up, I mean, growing up, uh, it was more rule-oriented than relationship-focused. Christians were against everything, especially if it was fun, right? You know how I learned to play pool? <laughs> In great jeopardy. <laughs> I got caught. Uh, it's just horrible. We took verses like avoid the very appearance of evil uh, to the place where it didn't allow us to do anything. My favorite was the phrase, to be set apart for God, meant not to be in a place where God could use you. And the church lost its focus, lost its power, lost its ability to minister to the lost. That been your experience? Yes. 
I heard a lady, this, this is crazy. You know, I, I can't stay with my notes long, so I'll, I'll go as long as I can. So, when, I, when I lose the notes, she just turn it off and we'll go from there. I was talking to a girl yesterday, true story, true story. And she said, now she doesn't go to church. And I asked her why. And she said, well, I used to, church, I used to work with a girl that went to church. A lady that went to church. And this lady said, you ready? When I get to heaven, God's going to have to give me two angels. One on the right and one on the left. Just to help me carry my crown. Oh. Let's all sing holy, holy, holy. Come on. Come on, take me in the song with me. <laughs> but you've met that person. Because my good deeds are so great. And that's, that's what, when, when, uh, when I told Travis I was going to preach on holiness, uh, he said, oh, really? Oh, they'll call me. <laughs> come back, you know. <coughs> it's really, and I'll tell you this, I'll tell you, that, that I've, I've been working through this for a long time. I really, because I, I want to bring to you holiness with grace. What I'm afraid of and what, what I see and what, what continues to be demonstrated not just in this congregation but in many others is that we come and we hear the Word of God and our, our want is to be changed by it. But then we go home. We go back to the workplace. We go back to our peers. We go back to our support group. And there's no invitation, there's no indication that holiness is even, even supposed, much less expected. Let me tell you, when holiness is taken out of the church, there's a sequence of events that happen. First, there is no law. If you have no holiness, if you have no call to be holy as I am holy, then you lose the law. Well, we're, we're not under the law. But you lose standard. You lose cause. Without the law, then there is no sin. If there, if there is no sin, then why change? <coughs> if there's no reason for change, then the gospel is lost. If we lose the gospel, we have no hope. <coughs> let's, let's work back up through that list. There is no hope. Uh, think about this. Any addicts here? <laughs> Where is your hope if it's not in the gospel? If it's not in the assurance that Christ, where is your hope if there's not the gospel? What is the gospel if there's not an expectation of change? Change from what if we don't identify sin? And how do we identify sin if we have no law? Let me, let me tell you my story, my story, part of my story. Uh, I was a good drunk. I was a, I was, I was a good drunk because I could get drunk and still function. Some call it alcoholic, but I was a good drunk. Then I got saved and quit drinking. So now I'm a recovering alcoholic. All in favor say aye. Hey, Malin, I'm Alan. <laughs> but you know, after five years of that, five years of avoiding the store, five years of knowing I couldn't go see this friend or that friend, five years of, of isolating myself, five years of avoiding the very appearance of evil, five years of setting myself apart. I finally said, you know what, God, there's got to be something bigger than this. 
Really? Really? For the rest of my life? For the rest of my life, I've got to live with that struggle. It was a real simple prayer. It was, Father God, I ask that you would make me holy like you are holy. And then I became perfect. <laughs> I wish it was like that. I didn't even think about it. Actually, I was rather offended. The pastor who preached that, he had the altar call and I came up here and he said, so, uh, Brother Allen, how can I pray with you? And I said, you know what, dude? I mean, I'm having trouble not drinking. And I, I really have trouble with pornography. And I want to smoke. All the brothers say, I, you, guys, you guys go, dude, I got that. <laughs> and he goes, okay, yeah. And this pastor was really cool, right? But he said it real quietly. He said, yeah, I get that. I used to be like that too. You see, we was in traditional church. So he couldn't go, amen. We'll put you in a group. No, and then, see, see, we were traditional church and nobody had those troubles. So he said, you know what I did? He said, I just asked God to come and to feel me. And to make me like Him. Yeah. Okay. He said, let me lead you. And he said, okay, okay. Father God, we ask that you would come and that you would feel my brother. God, come and feel me. That you would make Him holy. God, make me holy. Like you're holy. Like you're holy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nothing happened. I thought for sure that fireworks would go off. You know, <laughs> the people would come and go, yeah, he's arrived. Feel him, Lord. Feel him. <laughs> Went home a little bit <coughs> sad. A couple of days later, I was in 7 Eleven. Wait, that was the 7 Eleven I couldn't go to. And the lady said, I haven't seen you in a long time. How you been? Wow, better than I thought. Got to work and went out on the docks. See, that's where all the smokers went. See, I had to stay inside. Because they knew. And so I go out on the dock and they say, hey, want to smoke? I said, no, I'm trying to quit. Five years, right? No, I'm good. <laughs> Got to actually share my faith with my friends. Not religious. My faith. See, God has changed. If you ask me, I'll tell you that I'm no longer a recovering alcoholic. I'm delivered. And I don't know how to say that and it not sound, it's not judgmental. When I say that, my intent is to say that there is deliverance. There is a safe place. Now, do we need support? By all means. Oh, Lord, help us. Do we need support? Yes. Do you need groups to hold you accountable? Yes. In and out of the church, please. But I'm going to tell you that there is a place that God has afforded us that allows us to live in complete Freedom. I think I've got notes and they're not here. <laughs> that allows you and me to live in complete freedom. No longer bound by addiction. You know the thing that breaks my heart most? And this is as a pastor as a man and as a friend, is when I sit with you and I become terrified that you're not going to make it. And I, my only hope is to cry out, God, God, there's a better way. There's a way. God, can you help them? Can you help him? Can you help her? And it's not just addiction. It's everything. It's everything. Anybody here had a fight with your wife today? All the men said, I ain't risen my hand. Jay's not over. Jay's not over. Jay is young. Jay is very young. I saw a young man, a young man that we ministered to here a long time ago. I said a long time. About five years ago, and he was by himself. Party of one, right? And uh, I said, hey, dude. Long time no see. So he said, yeah. Me and my wife had a fight. 
Julian, party of one's not a party. If anybody's watching American, America's Got Talent. Party of one's not a party. Me and my wife had a fight. You know, is, are they going to make it? Are they going to make it? Is there hope? Is there something, kid, is there something that we can give them that you, when you sit down with your friends that are going through that, whether it be relational or financial or chemical, do you have something to give them other than the hope? I just hope things work out. I just, <laughs> and to have a truth that you can say, I, I know a God. <clears throat> I know a God. He can change you. I'm going to skip way, 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 way. If you find me cool, if you don't, that's right. We're going to actually look at some of the Beatitudes. There, there's calls for this. The sixth Beatitude, which is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9 says to that blessed is that one that has a heart that's pure. If you get into our doctrine, you'll find that we identify holiness with heart purity. That is to say that your intent, that your desire is positive towards God and towards man. That your heart is pure. That you intend no harm. And when you do something, you say, well, yeah, but there's an ulterior motive. No, no, no. Your motive is that they would be blessed. Your motive is that God would be exalted. <coughs> your motive is pure. But your intent is that no one would be harmed. So to get to that last one, and I'm going, to, I'm going to paraphrase and go through quickly. But the first one says that the blessed is that one who has a brokenness. I think it says poor in spirit. The opposite of poor in spirit would be haughty. It requires that you, that I, came to a place that we were fully aware that we had nothing. Poor in spirit. That we were without The next one talks about blessed are those that mourn. I remember, I remember going to an altar and crying out to God and saying, God, I have nothing. I have nothing to offer. I have wasted all that you have given me. Third one says, blessed are they that are meek. Meekness, the best definition I've heard involves a great stallion and a two-year-old child on its back. And that stallion chooses to be ridden, chooses to be maneuvered by a child. Could that stallion bring great destruction? Of course he could. But it requires a meekness. The Word tells us that Christ was meek and lowly in spirit. What that involves is that involves that you and that I would empty ourselves of all things, realizing that we have nothing. Do you understand that Christ saved you because of who He is and not who you are? Do you understand that He loves you because of who He is? Not what you do. I grew up with the holiness. I grew up with the church lady. She actually went to my church. <laughs> <laughs> we would fail. And she was real quick to explain to us that we were going to an everlasting hell. So if we're going to hell, we might as well get stoned. <laughs> Some of you are too encouraged by that. <laughs> I 
Because I never could make it. I never could, I never could be good enough. I never could walk perfect. I never could. There was that constant ridicule. The next three Beatitudes talk about an infilling, talk about a changing. The fourth one speaks of hungering and thirsting after righteousness. The context of that is as a man who is starving to death, that level of hunger, and as one who is dying of thirst, that level of thirst for righteousness. Do you realize, I'm going to say something. You ready for this? Well, this is, you ready? <laughs> Salvation without a desire for change. I question the salvation. Got it recorded. Yeah, I know, I know. You know what? Jesus, yeah, into my heart, he saved me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? I mean, I, God made me like this. Really? You happy with that? I told my daughter that. She's getting married in two weeks. And she goes, really, Dad? You happy with that? <laughs> See, God made me like this. You happy with that? <laughs> so I guess for the next two weeks, I don't get to eat. <laughs> <laughs> See me in three weeks. I'll make up for lost time. <laughs> Lord give it, the Lord take it away. <laughs> to realize, see, when I received Christ, the thing that burdened me so much was I didn't like who I was. I liked who He had made me. I liked who He was making in me. I liked who He was calling me to be. I hated who I was. Man, I was a liar. I was a cheat. I, I was the world's greatest liar. I'm thinking, Michael, I was the greatest. Don't stand up to me, brother. I was the world's You know what I'm saying? I was the world's greatest liar. Now they say, they say, well, all, all addicts are liars. I was a liar of liars. And I kept it all straight. I lied to my wife. I lied to my parents. I lied to my pastor, or my, my siblings. I lied to my boss. I lied to my friends. If, if I met you randomly on the street, it was just easier to lie. That's who I was. And there came a point where I said, God, I don't like this guy. I don't like this guy. Actually, I'm tired of keeping up with his stuff. So I first went to my wife and said, you need to know this about me. Not true, not true, not true. Not true. Not true. Long list. I called my friends and I said, you know what I told you? Not true. No. Didn't do that. Can't do that. Won't do that. Haven't done that. And my employer, you know what? <coughs> you might want to check those books. Because I didn't like who I was. And God called me to be different. Yeah, but you, that's not addiction. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Because I, I painted such a... Created a ball that a show dog couldn't jump over. But I needed to be changed. Because salvation without a desire for change is not salvation. I like this guy. I like all of you. There's more of me to like almost every day. Well, I like me. Because I know when I look in my heart, my heart is pure towards you, and my heart is pure towards my God. I, I, I have no secrets. I have no lies. I have no...
I struggled with holiness. <coughs> how, how, to, how to demonstrate, how to say it in such a way that you could receive it, that we could receive it, that it would make sense. Was was shared, uh, was visiting with John, brother uh, John Baird. Do y'all know he's a retired pastor? You have to get over it that I called you out. Do you know what a resource that is? How, how wonderful it is to have a man that I can sit down with and go. And he'll start taking the pieces and say, wait, what about precept upon precept? What about this? What about that? Shared a story with me, and I want to I read this. I'm not often that I read. It's, it's like a whole book. Yeah, who's scared now? <laughs> Let me read this to you. The title is A Giving Tree. Once there, was a, once there was a tree, and she loved a little boy. Every day the boy would come, and he would gather her leaves, make them into crowns, and play king of the forest. He would climb up her trunk and swing from her branches and eat apples. And they would play hide and go seek. When he was tired, he would sleep in her shade. And the boy loved the tree very much. And the tree was happy. But time went by and the boy grew older. And the tree was often alone. One day the boy came to the tree and the tree said, Come boy, come and climb up my trunk and swing from my branches. Eat my apples, play in my shade, and be happy. I'm too big to climb and play, said the boy. I want to buy things and have fun. I want some money. Can you give me some money? I'm sorry, said the tree. But I have no money. I only have leaves and apples. Take my apples, boy. Sell them in the city. Then you'll have money. You'll be happy. So the boy climbed up the tree and gathered her apples and carried them away. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away for a long time. The tree was sad. And then one day the boy came back and the tree shook with joy and she said, Come boy, climb up my trunk and swing from my branches and be happy. I'm too busy to climb trees, said the boy. I want a house to keep warm. I want a wife. I want children. And so I need a house. Can you give me a house? I have no house, said the tree. The forest is my house. But you may cut off my branches. Build a house. Then you'll be happy. And so the boy cut off her branches and carried them away to build his house. And the tree was happy. But the boy stayed away a long time, and when he came back, the tree was happy. She could hardly speak. Come, boy, she whispered. Come and play. I am too old to, and sad to play, said the boy. I want a boat. Oh, take me far away from here. Can you give me a boat? Cut down my trunk. Make a boat, said the tree. Then you can sail away and be happy. So, boy, so the boy cut down her trunk and made a boat. He sailed away. The tree was happy, but not really. After a long time, the boy came back again. I'm sorry, boy, said the tree, but I have nothing left to give you. My apples are gone. My teeth are too weak for apples, said the boy. Well, my branches are gone, said the tree. You, can, you cannot swing from them. I am too old to swing from branches, said the boy. My trunk is gone, said the tree. You cannot climb. I'm too tired to climb, said the boy. I'm sorry, sighed the tree. I wish that I could give you something, but I have nothing left. I'm just an old stump now. I'm sorry. I don't need very much now, said the boy. 
just a quiet place to sit and rest. I'm so tired. Well, said the tree, straightened herself up as much as she could. Well, an old stump is still good for sitting and resting. Come, boy, sit and rest. And the boy did. Oh, and the tree was happy. Salvation involves Jesus, the tree. The boy, that's you and I. And he came and he gave himself for all of our needs. And when we strayed away, he lured us back, he wooed us back. And we strayed and He wooed us. But He continues to meet our need. Can I get an amen? Amen. He has not forsaken you. <laughs> he has never left you alone. He continues to reach out to you and drag you back. Amen? Amen. Dragging you back. But holiness is different. See, salvation is... Jesus the tree holiness is you the tree reaching out holiness happens when you hunger and thirst for righteousness sake holiness happens when mercy becomes who you are and what not what you do when your preference for others exceeds your love for yourself. When you say, I will truly die for them. And worse than that, you're willing to live in such a way that they don't have to die. That's holiness. That's what He's called us to do. Not, not just to rest in the shade of the tree. He's invited us to be the tree. He's invited us to be the one that serves. He's invited us to be more than we could ever be. To give all that you have. Not just sober, but delivered. No longer controlled. Does that, guys, do you, does, any, does that sound good to anybody but me? To no longer be controlled by our fleshly desires. But to be free. And free indeed. In such a way that no matter who God sets in our path. You know what my favorite, you know what my favorite question is? For, for what, how much is that going to cost? <laughs> uh, nothing. God, 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 He not only called, He gave me permission to do that. Well, you know, we need, to, we need to sit down and talk. What's that going to cost? Yeah. No. no, if you're looking for a somebody you can pay, you're going to have to call a real, a real person. Because we're going to share what God has done for us. We're going to share how God has changed us. And we're going to invite you to be changed too. Holiness is for you. It's, it's, not, it's not what old... When, when I say, okay, anybody, anybody have a... I need a picture, right? Holy. Think of somebody holy. Okay, are they little and old? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Little, I, I thought Sister Bell, right? Sister Bell used to be part of the church. She said it back and never said nothing. She was just, just sweet. She just oozed sweetness. <laughs> and we knew that she prayed all day long. We were just convinced of that. Holy. Perfect? No. You admit me. But holy, yeah. Yeah, changed. Absolutely changed by the power of God. Do I mess up every day? Do I stumble? Not lately. Holy. Changed. <coughs> holy? Are you changed? 
Are you allowing God by His Holy Spirit to change you? Here's how it happens. Lord Jesus, I thank You that You have saved me. Now change me. Do I need to write that down? Do I get it? <laughs> write it down. <laughs> yeah, I was say. I need that to go at least. That's how complicated it is. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have saved me. Now change me. You know what he'll do? He'll change you. He'll make you really dissatisfied where you're at. You won't like you. And he'll change you. And see, the you that he'll change is the one on the inside. Stand together. Father God, we thank you that you loved us first. We thank you, God, that you have drawn us to yourself. We thank you, God, that you have invited us to be changed. So, God, that's our prayer today. Change us. Make us like you. Create in us truly a new heart. A heart that's holy and blameless before God and man. We thank you in advance for it. God, we thank you for the lives that will be impacted by uh, the changing that you do in this body. We invite you to go before us. We do so in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, your Son, our soon-coming King. It's in His name alone we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you.